I honestly don't know anything about this book because I got it thinking it was a memoir and it literally says right here that it's a novel so I'm just not the smartest. Hi everybody my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very very nerdy with my June haul. was a fun month got some fun things here to show you a lot of them are actually either book boxes or um I think a couple of them were gifts since my birthday was in June but there's a lot here per usual so let's just dive right in the very first two books are from my most I think my most recent fairy loot so if you haven't seen that unboxing I will leave it linked above we have both the YA and the adult box so here is your warning that um the next two are spoilers if you haven't seen it I think these were both for May yes um so the YA book which actually you will have seen because it's definitely on my TBR is Divine Rivals and this is by Rebecca Ross it says no god no war no one can come between them so it's this beautiful edition with spray edges. This book is a YA fantasy romance that takes place during wartime. It follows these two people who are reporters for the same publication. Um, it says two rivals, two stories, two hearts, one fate. So it's their romance. It says two rival journals find love through a magical connection. Their fate dependent on their facing the depths of hell together. So it follows our main two characters, Iris and Roman, um, who I mentioned were two journalists, the same uh, our columnists, I guess, at the same publication, which is called the Oath Gazette. It takes place during um, a wartime. It is all the gods fighting in the war. And I think they're both fighting for the same, um, like, position or promotion at this specific uh, column or publication. So it's the two of them. And it says something about, like, they take their typewriters with them into war. I don't really know, but it's, like, journalists writers during wartime and I'm interested to see what the fantastical elements of it are so I do have us on my TBR for July so hopefully I will get to it because it just sounds so so good but yeah um this beautiful edition I'll definitely plop the original cover on here because it's one that I've seen now that I know what the original cover looks like but very different and I kind of loved it so beautiful and then the adult fairy loot that came in May was this one, which is The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas, uh, another beautiful fairy loot edition. This one is very much a like enemies to lovers, I want to say, vibe to it. This one follows our two main characters again. One of them is Aya, um, and she is the spy master for the queen. And then you have a guy named Will, who is the queen's enforcer. So Aya's taken a blood oath to protect everyone that she fights against, including Will, who she cannot stand. Um, but they're both sent to investigate. There is some rumors of dark magic that rise in nearby kingdoms. So they're both sent to investigate. And then her powers, whatever those are, it's not really said in the synopsis. Uh, they kind of start working a little bit um, beyond what she has originally thought they were supposed to be. So they kind of um, go a little farther than they should. And she and Will, I think, are going to try to figure out what's going on. It's got some very interesting book art here of the two of them fighting. Um, and I'm very interested what's going to happen there. It sounds good. I don't really know, but this is a, uh, adult fantasy romance. I'm thinking it's fantasy romance, um, just based on all the vibes here. And that is what I want right now. So that is the other book that I got in Fairy Loot this month. I then have a pre-order that came in and that is the fourth volume of Lore Olympus by Rachel Smith. This is a graphic novel series that is a reimagining of the Hades and Persephone story but specifically just like Greek gods in general. I think everything, I mean it's still coming out so if you want to read it for free you can read it way beyond what's actually physically published uh, on the app Webtoons which is a free app if you'd like to check it out. I highly recommend it's your way of reading these for free but this is the next installment in their story. There's not really a whole lot to say about this one because it is the fourth one but like I said it's a Hades and Persephone. The art is stunning. Look at all those beautiful colors. Um, it does not steer clear or steer away from 
the harder topics. So if this is a book series that you're interested in, just kind of know that it does deal with mental themes of mental abuse and sexual trauma and things like that. So just kind of know that that's coming. But these are really beautiful editions that I just absolutely love. And now I have the most recent one. I think there is at least two more announced as of right now. Um, I'm sure we're going to continue to get more because she's continuing to put it out. Like if you go online and read it for free, it's not finished yet. So if you'd like to just be up to date like I am, I'm just going based on the physical editions. I kind of hold off on reading these until like a, a readathon or something comes along because these are really easy books to dive into there. But yeah, just got my next volume and I'm very excited about it. The next one I got from a local small bookstore that I kind of just discovered um, near me, which I'm absolutely obsessed with, and I had to get it. Plus, this book's kind of been on my radar for a while, and that is The Neighbor Favor, and this is by Christina Forrest. It says, Love Was Closer than they knew. And then on the back, it says a shy bookworm enlists her charming neighbor to help her score a date, not knowing he's the obscure author she's been corresponding with in the sparkling and heart fluttering romance by Christina Forrest. So it's about writers. Um, that's all I need to know, honestly. I haven't read anything by this author, even though I've definitely collected a couple of things by this author. I think I've got at least one, maybe two books at this point that are by this author, but they're both YA, so I haven't read them quite yet. But this is, I think, I think her first step into adult. I'm not sure, but it's all of the fun, beautiful romance vibes. I'm very excited about it. Um, it follows our main character's Lily, who is the shy bookworm, and then her neighbor, whose name is Nick, who's supposed to help her out. And I think it's a, like, dual identity kind of situation. I don't know. It just sounds fun, and they look super cute. So... I'm very excited about this. Another contemporary romance that I'm not in the mood for right now, but I am very excited to hopefully pick this up once the contemporary romance mood hits me again. The next two books are my book of the month books. So the first one is one that I can't even remember what this one's about, to be honest, but it's Ink Blood Sister Scribe, and this is by Emma Torres. Uh, like I said, this is a beautiful, look at that beautiful cover. It says here that this is a spellbinding debut novel of two estranged half-sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books. Must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection. A tale of familial loyalty and betrayal and the pursuit of magic and power. So it's definitely giving me well, what's that book that I read? Sorcery of Thorns vibe is based on like the magical library element. I'm not sure what really grabbed my attention about this, but I think it was the fact that it was set in a library that just sounds really cool. I like the sister kind of dynamic. I think it's really interesting to read about. I don't read a lot about it, so I'm really interested to see how it's going to be portrayed in this book. And I don't know, there's just something about this that sounded really good and I think it's gonna be great. So this is the first book that I picked up, but I also got a second one, which is The Wishing Game, and this is by Meg Schaefer, another one that has to do with books, but this one is about a reclusive author. So this one says, years ago, a reclusive mega best-selling author quit writing under mysterious circumstances. Suddenly he resurfaces with a brand new book and a one-of-a-kind competition, offering a prize that may change the winner's life. So we follow our main character, Lucy, who was obsessed with this series that this author had written. It's, I think, a childhood series, and she found a lot of solace in these books. Now she's all grown up, she's a teacher's aide, and there is a kid in her class that she is in love with and wants to adopt as her own, but she doesn't have the means to do so. And then this competition that is set by this author um, is broadcast, and it's basically the winner is going to receive like the only copy of this new book, and then I'm sure there's a cash prize to it as well. And I think it's she and four others, or four total, four total lucky contestants are chosen to compete um, and win the one and only copy. So this is her way of basically being able to maybe afford to adopt this kid. So another th book about authors and writing, I don't know what it is, but this just sounds very interesting as well. And then I went to a used bookstore while I was on vacation because of course I did. Um, of course I found bookstores that were um, independently run and I picked up a couple of Lindsay Sand books. So we have An English Bride in Scotland and it has this absolutely beautiful step back. And then we also have Devil of the Highlands with this one. They're both part of the same series. I do have one other, I think maybe two others in this series, and it's all like Scottish and Highland inspired works. So I picked these up because A, the covers are beautiful, and B, they're part of this Scottish series. 
So in English Bride in Scotland follows our main character, Annabelle, who is about to take the veil and become a nun, but her mother shows up and basically whisks her away to get married to this man that her sister was supposed to marry, but she ran away. And so it's her who has absolutely no knowledge, super, super shy, no knowledge of being a wife, being in charge of a home, being like what the wedding night looks like, anything like that. And then on the reverse side, the Scot that she's supposed to marry is named Ross, and he's immediately taken with her. And then it's just something here along the lines of an enemy endangers her life. Um, so it's their romance. This one follows a guy who named Cullen, who is the laird of his clan, and people call him the devil. And so he's like, I don't care what people think of me. They can think of whatever they want of me. I just need a wife to carry on my legacy. And then you've got on the reverse side, I think her name is Eveline, I believe. And she is just intrigued by him and agrees to be his wife because she's like, my stepmother is awful and literally anything is better than this. So it's their relationship. Not a whole lot of information, but Scottish Highland romance. I'm just like collecting at this point, all of these Scottish Highland romances that are by Lindsay Sands and Karen Rainey. And so one of these days, I'm just going to do a Scottish Highland sect. And I'm just going to read a bunch of them back to back. But those are a couple of more that I picked up. And then I also picked up a beautiful book, which you probably will have already seen. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And this is by Heather Fawcett. This is a book that I'm hoping to get to in the month of July as well. It is a book that is the June and July Patreon buddy read adult and why buddy read from Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. So I'm hoping to get to this one. I honestly don't know a lot about it. I know it's a fantasy book. I know it's um, fiction, but it's given in, it's written in a way that makes it seem like it's this woman cataloging her, her like figuring out all these fairies and things like that. So um, I don't really know. It's supposed to be super cozy and cute. So it follows Emily Wilde, who is a professor who travels to a small town um, in the north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. So this is definitely giving like cozy fantasy vibes. So I don't really know what I'm getting into, but I've heard good things. And again, it's got like this library binding, which is just beautiful. So I picked this one up as well. This is like a happy birthday present to myself from myself, but it's so pretty. The next four I'm going to do together because they're all part of the same series and they are the first four books in the Throne of Glass series and the new covers by my beautiful best friend Lauren. Thank you so much. These were her birthday gifts for me. So I had started collecting this series and then about after I collected like the first couple, um, they started changing the covers and I have no personal attachment to the old covers. I honestly kind of like these more. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and start collecting them in these new editions. I think that they will be easier to uh, collect. Plus they all match. Like my, I had all of these in the old covers and now I have replaced them with these. My copy of the Assassin's Blade is was not the same size and now everything matches so that is stunning so I have the assassin's blade then we have the first one throne of glass we have a crown of midnight and then air of fire so they are beautiful and I'm obsessed with them so I think I own the first half of the series now I think there are still four more that I need to collect at some point but Lauren's helped me start to collect the editions that I like so thank you so much Lauren for my beautiful gifts I will get around to these hopefully soon I feel like this is the year that I need to at least start this series it's going to be a long one I know that uh but basically this series I don't even know how to explain it but it follows our main character Selena and she is basically competing to become the king's champion or she is the king's champion and she's been forced to like win her freedom and so it's a competition of sorts but it does say here on the back that there are a couple of people who are going to um, get in her way. We've got the crown prince and then also the captain of the guard so you've got a little bit of a love triangle. I know absolutely nothing about the series except for some of the names which is exactly kind of how I went into the Akatar series as well. But so I have the first three books and then the Assassin's Blade is the prequel that goes before. So um, let me know if I should start. I think someone said I should start with the Assassin's Blade, but I also heard someone tell me that I should start with Throne of Glass. So if you've read the series, tell me what you suggest because now I'm a little confused on what the right way to read this is. But I have the first four in these beautiful editions and I am, I'm obsessed.
I then did finally get a copy of my, I think this was my April adult fairy loot. Yes, it was. And that is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. So it's this beautiful edition with sprayed edges. I think it's absolutely stunning. And I honestly love this way more than the actual cover that's like super green. There's something about this cover that's just so subtle and I love it. So this says here on the back that it's inspired by the adventures of Pinocchio as well as Swiss Family Robinson. It's a masterful and heartfelt fantasy adventure. Here even a family assembled from spare parts might become whole. So it does take place I think in the future and it takes place where this guy basically helps out robots or like helps it's a family of robots i really don't know what i'm getting into i'm not gonna lie but it's like a family family of robots and he finds a new one and he like fixes it and in doing so it sends like a signal to somebody and so their little haven is no longer a haven so i don't really know what we're getting into but i love tj clune's books i'm very invested in them so of course i had to get my hands on the newest one and when i figured out what the, this this was going to be the book based on the theme I was very excited about it so um I just I love this edition I think it's stunning like look at that absolutely beautiful art I beautiful and now I have a copy of it so that's very exciting the next book was actually a gift for my husband that I got him because we celebrated our anniversary in June as well and that is the most recent book by Tom Hanks it's a novel it is the making of another major motion picture masterpiece so I honestly don't know anything about this book because I got it thinking it was a memoir and it literally says right here that it's a novel so I'm just not the smartest um but from what Chris has told me now he's still reading it so it's not finished it's like the process of this guy's manuscript or this guy's book being turned into a movie so um there's a lot to it there's a lot of elements Chris said that there were some like I can see right here there's some comic at some point and he's just kind of uh, figuring out there's definitely some mixed media elements because where did it go I just saw like part of a script in here so it definitely has some different elements here we go you've got some parts here so I don't know it sounded really good and he seems to be really enjoying it and that is the point so I picked this one up for him for our anniversary and um we'll see how it goes and then the very last book that I got in the month of June was a pre-order as well, and that is The Shadow Cabinet by Juno Dawson, which is the second book in the HMRC series. Or the first one, Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Last year, absolutely loved it. Couldn't wait to get my hands on the second one. Here it is. So I'm probably going to wait until fall to get around to this one, just because it feels like a very fall book, and I'm not in the mood for it quite right now and I loved the first one so much even though it has a cliffhanger at the end of it that I want to give this my full attention so I'm gonna hold off on this one for a little bit basically the first one follows these four women in this world and um they are all witches and they have magical powers they're all different kind of magical powers and in this world the HMRC which is actually the tax department in like our world is no normal humans I guess think that it is a tax department so no one really thinks anything of it but it's actually like the governing body of witches and witches um specifically female witches well witches are female in this world are basically more powerful than the wizards of the world I can't remember what they're called warlocks maybe and so they're doing all the governing and this book follows four different women who were really close when they were younger and some stuff happened so they've kind of like separated coming back together because there was this kid that was found that is supposed to be kind of like the culminating thing for this big bad that they're all expecting and it dives heavily into trans issues and um a lot of things of that nature so I adored the first one I thought it was so good and I can't wait to dive into the second one I think it's going to be a trilogy so there's only one more book unless she's added onto it which I'm not sure she has but I have it I have this beautiful edition which matches my uh, second one or the first one that I picked up so I'm obsessed with the first one and I can't wait to dive into this one hopefully in the next few months or so because it is like very much oh it's this trilogy right here so it is going to be three books but this one is definitely like top TBR for the fall but I think I'm going to hold off on it for a little bit but I I have it I'm so excited about it and that's it that is a look at the books that I picked up in June I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned as always please let me know your thoughts on them or if there's something that you picked up in June that you would just want to rave about tell me that or 
any other bookish thing. Tell me all of your thoughts. I honestly love them. So uh, tell me all the things. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So I'm going to check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you.